give me love, give me love, give me love She give me good love I just see it, say me love her so And she's a blessing from above My girl, you know you're good so Anything you need, let me This video was made at a special request from a friend, Chansey Payne, who teaches 5th grade in Carrollton, Missouri. Her 5th graders are learning about early explorers and had some questions for us, so here's the Karis Cruz answer. I get seasick a lot, and to avoid it, we have to use these stickers and C-bands to help us to not get motion sickness. And these are disposable puke bags, so whenever you puke in them and it gets about half full, you just throw them in the water. Um, what happens when you miss your puke bag? Uh. <laughs> That's happened once, and it get it gets everywhere. Like mom and dad everywhere. Like it gets on our lap. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Um, not really bad. We've had some 50 mile an hour wind for a few seconds um, and we were in a pretty good sized storm in Samana. Um, what we typically try to do is just avoid storms by looking at the weather several days before we go on a long sail to find a good weather window just to completely avoid it. But every once in a while we don't have a choice. We have to go through it and so uh, when it's really blowing we have to do what's called reefing the sails so we make the sail area smaller and smaller so the heavier wind doesn't rip them down and if it's really bad we can just turn our boat right into the wind so that uh, the wind is directly against us and then it just kind of blows past the sails and saves them from damage what do you get to do on long sails do you still have to do homeschool no just watch movies watch movies read books play games <laughs> Read lots of books. Lots and lots of books, Get right? Get sleep whenever we can. Homeschool. Uh, Tucker's right. About one to three hours a day. It sort of depends on either where we are and what we have going on, if we're sailing or not, uh, and just kind of what our routine is at that time. Sometimes when we're in a really good routine and we're at a place for a while, we'll, we'll do about two hours, maybe a little bit more. And other times, um, it may just be an hour. Sometimes Tucker, we wake up and Tucker's already done. He's just up and ready. And other times when we sail for long periods of time, we don't have the kids do homeschool at all. So on the back side of that, they do homeschool every day, um, every day of the week. So when we do sail for quite a bit, they don't do anything. But they do get to enjoy electronics and books. Extracurricular activities. Law has learned to spear fish. He's learned way more types of fish that we have than we've ever learned. Uh, and shells, Law knows tons of the shell names. They've just, they've all learned so much just being out here on the water. Art, they don't like, so we don't do very often. Um, PE, I mean, they swim nonstop uh, so many days. What else? Music. We listen to music every day. Um, so we, we, we get a lot of extracurricular. I didn't really build that into the curriculum. It was just a self-building thing that I was relying on. Wait, falling off the boat? Yeah. Oh, no, never mind. I thought you said falling the hat. Oh, <laughs> has any one or any cat fallen in a hat? Yeah. One hand, uh, two yeah. hand, three hand. I'm not included because mom watches where she walks. And but she's the only person that's fallen off the boat. <laughs> okay, so last Christmas, I, I the dinghy was uh, slick with water and I slipped right off Christmas morning and was wet with seawater the rest of the day. Yep. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're not the only one that fell off the boat. Whoa. What? Fell off the swing couple times. So we have a swing on the side of the boat, and one day Tucker didn't have it locked in. 
And yeah. Law went to swing and... <laughs> it's true, it happened twice, I believe. Maybe yeah. more. So, typically, Emily and I will take uh, shifts at night. Uh, although, we let Law start taking his first shift um, just about a month ago. Um, but every two hours, Emily and I switch off at night and we try to get some sleep. Sometimes we go three hours, but uh, it, it works pretty well. Be uh, grouper. Grouper. Dad? I would really like uh, lambi or conch uh, cut up into little pieces and made into what's called conch fritters. They're kind of like hush puppies. Uh, but a conch is a, a big shell. Um, I don't see one laying around, but basically the great big shells that you pull the muscle out of, and it's really good. We get them a lot down in the Bahamas. No. Barracuda. Barracuda. Barry the Cuda. And mom's gonna go, gosh, I love all seafood, but grouper is just really hard to beat. Mahi Mahi and um, Wahoo are also awesome. Oh, they should. No, 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 no. Barracuda fish tacos with barbecue sauce. <laughs> with barbecue sauce. <laughs> Don't forget soft shell. <laughs> All right, do we have Wi-Fi on the boat? Yes. Well, we have we have Wi-Fi um, part time, so we have to go buy a cellular package, um, and then we hotspot off to other phones and whatnot and use Wi-Fi. We also have what's called a Wi-Fi booster that uh, sometimes there are restaurants that give out free Wi-Fi and we're able to uh, connect out on our boat and then it goes out to the other phones and devices on the boat. So when we do have Wi-Fi, it's especially if we paid for it, it's, we use it very limited. Um, we just, we don't use internet much at all actually. Fishing is my favorite part of the trip, or one of the favorite parts, and we've done a lot of fishing. I actually keep a spreadsheet of the total number of fish or creatures that we have caught, speared, or caught on our fishing pole off the back of the boat, and we're up to 275, 183 lionfish, woohoo! And the boys are getting really good at spearing, so those numbers are climbing. We love to hear that reel go spinning off the back of the boat. We all get excited and we all have our part. Tucker's kind of on video. Bob's the str only strong enough one to reel it in. And I get the gloves to kind of grab the line. And then we've got a squirt bottle of stuff that helps us to kill the fish quickly so that it doesn't suffer and the meat stays really good and fresh. And that is Law's job. As well as helping me clean the fish and just tackle it once we get into the boat. Some of the coolest fish we've caught is a sailfish, I think we caught two or three, a swordfish, a several mahi, bull mahi, a big wahoo was a really fun fight, uh, but it was just Bob and I on the boat at the time, but it was super fun. One of my favorite memories is when we were in the Dominican Republic and we went to a place called 27 Waterfalls and you basically hike up this mountain range and with a helmet and a life jacket and shoes and a swimsuit and you have got a guide and you can either choose 27 waterfalls or 12. We chose 12 because uh, we didn't know exactly how long or what we were getting into and it's basically they just take you in and you jump off these rock formations into little pools and if you're not jumping they just push you and you're sliding in this natural rock formation. And it was, it was really fun. It was outside my comfort zone because I'm afraid of heights, but I was so glad I did it. And we were just in a different world being in that canyon with nothing around us but these rock walls and waterfalls. And it was so cool. Tucker, what is your favorite memory of our trip? Flamingo Beach. Flamingo. <laughs> 10 foot, I'd say. 20 or 30. Yeah, 20 to 30 foot waves. They're huge. There was a big northerly swell, and we got to hit it. It was rows and rows of big, big waves. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And we just happened to have some boogie boards, right? So we rode those waves. 
<laughs> My favorite memory was at Bon Air. We were scuba diving off Klein Island and I got to cut a turtle. Yeah. It was pretty cool. And what else did you do when you were scuba diving in Bon Air? Uh, we went down to a good depth and we got in the middle of a big ball of fish. Big ball of fish. Uh, that was one of my favorite memories as well. Um, some of the places we've been and people we've met have been just incredible. Uh, we've been between the Pitons and uh, Bonaire was incredible. There's another place called Hogsty Reef where we uh, shot lobsters and uh, with, with a, what's called a Hawaiian sling. It's a, a spear basically. And then uh, we also got large grouper and filled up our uh, our freezer with food that we'll actually be eating this week and next. And one night, whenever we were sleeping, um, we just went to sleep and we didn't hear a giant toolbox fall on the cat. Um, I went to his room and my eyes went huge and there was a giant toolbox on him. Water everywhere, <laughs> food everywhere, tools everywhere. <laughs> toolbox got the cat that night. Okay. So he took the cat to um, the beach and it was really stressful getting him into the dinghy. He clawed dad a couple times. <laughs> Um, and it took us a while to get him out of the dinghy and he was so afraid of the water and he thought we were trapped on this beach forever and so he just walked around He uh, there was the night when he tried to jump through the hatch, but the hatch was closed. It's a clear piece of glass, so you can't really tell if it's open or not. And he jumped, wham, fell right back down into the bed and didn't know what had happened. Just, I mean, we didn't do it to him, but... We giggled about that for a while. We had to giggle for a while. The longest sail we've probably ever done was from Bonaire to Inagua which was around 700 miles. It lasted four nights and five long days. Was it hard not being on shore for that long? Yes, it was extremely. We got bored at a lot of periods. We just sat there watching movies all day. At some points, electronics get extremely boring. Wow, can you say that again? No. <laughs> So we, uh, we have a generator on our boat that produces electricity along with solar pow power panels. And between those two things, uh, we run all the things that you guys back at home are used to, such as a washing machine, such as a water maker, which we actually produce drinkable water with. Um, we have lights and cameras and uh, laptops that we use uh, and cell phones, obviously. So. We have most of the things you guys have back at home, refrigerators and freezers, um, and it makes our life much easier. I, I couldn't imagine living on a boat without having the, the basic amenities because uh, a lot of people out here actually go to shore and, and take, uh, water, take jug. water jugs with them and, uh, and live off of like half a gallon a day, and that's just not us. Right. So we're lucky we do have a washer on board, but we have to hang all of our laundry to dry and then watch for rain. Um, right. We got to pull all the laundry in if it starts raining because then it's wetter than when it started. And uh, that always makes me interesting. We've become a lot more resourceful as well. We've seen all kinds of cool creatures down here, such as sharks and rays, like stingrays and eagle rays. We We've uh, scuba dived uh, a couple hundred times now. We, uh, man, there's just some beautiful spots that people should uh, come down and experience because the kind of once in a lifetime places. School, do you guys like homeschool? No. No! Are you ready to go back to normal school? Yes! <laughs>